you so much for coming. Now, some of you may know that this year of 1857 did not begin well for me, but I still thank the dear Lord for my many blessings. And maybe it was a church mouse, and my health could be better, but everywhere I go I see the smiling face of an old friend. <laughs> and it reminds me, it seems such a long time ago now, when I had nursed him through illness. It could be with Met in Jamaica, or the battlefields of the Crimea. Just the other day, I was on the omnibus, and I felt a hand on my shoulder. my life. <laughs> oh, William Mitchell from the 47th. <laughs> uh, lost a few teeth for most of the air since we last met. <laughs> oh, good to see you again, Mother. Saved my life, you did. How could I forget his piercing blue eyes and his smiling countenance? He was little more than a lad then. A new army recruit off the boat in Kingston, but dying a few weeks later from Yellow Jack. Oh, that's Yellow Fever. But I gave him my remedies and held him in my arms through the night and thanked the dear Lord he pulled through. And now, here in London, I see so many of our boys back from the Crimea. This morning, on my way home from Covent Garden Market, I heard the tap, tap, tap of a crutch and a voice that soared above the hustle and bustle. Auntie Seiko! Auntie Seiko! Slow down, will you? The last time I had seen Captain Herbert was at the siege of Sebastopol. His right leg had been blown <coughs> off and he was bleeding to death. But I managed to put on a tourniquet, praying to God in all that filth he would survive. You know, meeting these dear men brings such joy to my heart. And that is something, my friends, that money can never buy. You know, I've never given money much thought. We were born to be happy, and the surest way to be wretched is to prize money over much. Oh, but I haven't introduced myself. My name is Mary Seapole. I'm a carer, healer, herbalist, cook, pickle and jelly manufacturer, would-be bowl prospector, if that surprised you, hotelier, sempstress, adventuress, tailoress, and doctress. But most of all, I love to care for people. And if I have to travel to do it, then travel I will do. So I'd like you to come on a short journey with me now. I was born in Kingston, Jamaica in 1800. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I nearly let slip my age. But um, let me just say that myself and the century were both young together. I am a Creole. I have good Scottish blood cursing through my veins. My father, Major James Grant was a soldier from an old Scottish military family. My mother was also a Creole. She owned and ran Blundell Hall, a boarding house in Kingston, catering for army and navy officers and their wives and families, as well as visitors to the town. My mother and Blundell Hall were famous throughout Jamaica. She was one of the Creole doctresses. You may have heard of them, experts in herb and the art of how to use them in healing. This ancient remedy had been taken to the West Indies by the slaves brought over from Africa and handed down in our families from generation to generation. Through my dear mother, I developed a lifelong yearning for medical knowledge and my vocation to heal was born. By the time I was 12 years old, my mother had given me a special box for my medicines and I was helping take care of her patients. But healing's not just about medicines. It's about good food, fresh air, talking to people and listening to their stories. And what stories I heard, tales of distant lands that so made me want to travel. Papa had given me an old map of the world and I pinned it on my bedroom wall and on it would trace a journey from Jamaica to England and Scotland. I used to dream of going to England. So you can imagine my excitement when a group of relatives invited me to accompany them on a trip to London. I was 16 years old. I stayed in London for a year, but once I was back in Jamaica, I knew I had to return. But what to do there? I thought of the markets, and I thought of a way to do business. I will introduce London to a taste of the West Indies. West Indian pickles and preserves to sell. 
Come and buy my delicious homemade pickles, West Indian pickles and preserves to sell. This time I stayed in London for two years, but again when I returned to Kingston, I was restless. Once you have the urge to travel, it never leaves you. I travelled to New Providence in the Bahamas, Haiti, Cuba, and spent the next few years travelling, but always returning home to London Hall. Until one day, I'll never forget, one beautiful spring morning, when I first set eyes on Edwin Horatio Hamilton Seacole. I was back from my travels and helping my mother at London Hall. Mama, who's that charming man over there? He's so pale and thin. No, let me nurse him, Mama. I'll soon make him well again. And on the 10th of November, 1836, I married him. My dear husband was a godson of Lord Nelson and named after him and Lady Hamilton. But poor Edwin was not in good health. And after only eight short years of marriage, he sadly died. Not long after, my mother also died. But I was determined not to be defeated. I thought, it's time to travel. Now, I had a half-brother in Panama, and I decided to visit him there. And while I was there, there was an outbreak of cholera. And again, I hoped to cure many patients. Only returned home to Jamaica when I heard of an outbreak of yellow fever. Now, before a whole year before the Crimean War, I was asked to set up a military nursing service for the British Army. The yellow fever outbreak in Kingston had been so severe that the army doctors couldn't cope, and we Creole doctresses did ourselves proud and saved many lives. Now, when I heard of the outbreak of the Crimean War, I knew that so many of the soldiers I had known and nursed in Jamaica were on their way to fight, and I was determined to go and help them. I took the first boat back to England and presented myself at the war office for the place of hospital nurse. Alas, everywhere I went, I was turned down. I remember standing in a cold, wintry London street, thinking, why have I been rejected? Is it really because I've had no nursing experience in England? Or is it because of my dusky skin? But I was not going to be defeated. I managed to make my way over to Balaclava in the Crimea and set up the British Hotel. Now life in the British Hotel was the busiest I have ever known. I was up before daybreak. I had to sweep out the store, medicines to make up, poultry to be plucked, meat to prepare, and at seven o'clock the coffee would be ready. And there was always a great demand for coffee. We were preparing hundreds of meals as well because the convalescent officers had to be fed. The soldiers would say, you can buy anything from Mother Seacole's from an anchor to a needle. Well, when I say buy, perhaps I should have been a little less generous with the IOUs, but who can you trust if you can't trust a British Army officer? <laughs> but the most important part of the day began at nine o'clock, when the sick and wounded began to arrive. Now, if there was news of fighting, I would take my medicines, get on my horse, and ride out into the battlefield. Those military surgeons in Jamaica had taught me well how to stitch and dress wounds. I would hold those poor boys in my arms, shells roaring overhead. The world turned into a living hell. In September 1855, there was a big push to end the siege of Sebastopol. The Russians had held out for a year, and now it was time for the British and French forces to storm the city. How can I begin to describe the horror of those days. The dreadful slaughter of our brave men as they stormed the first bastion. My favorite regiment, the 97, cut to pieces. All my little boys, gone. I witnessed the whole thing and was the first woman to enter the fallen city. 
bringing food and medicines to the survivors. Everywhere was wreck and destruction. Not a building was left standing. Blood and blackened remains of men and horses. Pile upon pile of rotting corpses festering in ditches. Untended, dying soldiers, maggots crawling in their wounds, rats gnawing at their limbs. And above it all, the overwhelming stench of death in the sky. Ablaze with fire. I was there. The war lasted until spring 1856. Over 250,000 men died, many from disease. I shall never forget the suffering and the bravery I witnessed in the Crimea. The human cost of a war fought far away in another land. Please God, let us all never forget that cost. Thank you.